Where's Andrew? <laughs> Boo, I was there the whole time. Hi everybody, welcome to Archie Marathon. Kevin Huey, Andrew Maynard. Uh, we're in Sydney. We're, yeah, we're in Sydney. We actually got to leave Victoria. Archie Marathon was meant to be like touring and um, we've been in lockdown, so we haven't done it. But today it's different. We've got seven amazing people that are wandering around with us. We're going all around Sydney for, over the next few days, looking at cool shit like this. Where are we? We're at the St. Barnabas Church by FJMT. It's pretty cool, let's go have a look. So, so heavily referencing Johan Utzen. Yep, the Barnabas Church in, in Denmark. In a good way, in a respectful way. Johan Utzen's thing was what, the as you see with the Opera House, so the same guy that did the Opera House. The plinth and the cloud, we very much see this in this building. It's a beautiful procession that goes from really busy street up through a series of trees into this forecourt. And this forecourt also, you can see behind us, also has a street address. It goes down to the community side on that side. A beautiful language of frames and things tucked in behind the frame. And the main church, which you'll see in a second, has, and it looks like, a box that's been lifted up and these two bookends are just supporting it. So you, we basically just tucked in in a compressed moment and then we'll uh, see what's happening inside. So it's definitely worth checking out the definitely check out the Bargsvar Church by um, Woodson. You also see it in this episode, which is about VR, but we actually modelled it and walked through it. Uh, but the same sort of logic. You've got this curving cloud that goes through. Unfortunately, I couldn't figure out how to open these doors, but it continues straight through into the main chapel as well. It's east-west orientation, so that there is east. So you get this beautiful diffuse light. Unlike Sadawando's Church of Light, where it is just a slit, it has a slit and has depth. It gets quite fat there, as you can see in the middle. So you actually get really beautiful bounce light into this space. And down below here, we've got a, basically it's technically like a bridge. You can see um, these seating spaces um, and also the gaps actually lines up with the frame that we talked about. And these canopy from the outside comes sweeping in to the inside. But below us is um, community space. And like all good sacred spaces, the sound changes. <laughs> Suddenly the street noise is gone. Um, all of the lighting is secondary. So it's much more introspective. We're looking inwards now. And it's about getting together as a community and asking some bigger questions. Woodson's church did the curve only in one direction. Everything else was quite restrained and rectilinear, where here what they've tried to do is actually introduce curves in the other direction as well. So you get this interplay between them, which has created some lumpy detailing, <laughs> but it's ambitious. I would actually say Woodson's is much more successful because of the restraint of just doing the curves in one direction. It is your Woodson though. Yeah. He is a master. But um, this is still pretty special. Very, very special, the quality of light. And just thinking about things like audio visuals. So there's actually cloth over that where there's a, a lot of speakers and audio visual in that bulkhead there. And also dampens the acoustics. Mm. It is also used as a community space and is for different events. So it's not necessarily just a church. So you can see there's a lot of instruments set up for events and- Well, there's no religious symbols. Like there's no cross in here um, so that it uh, is, you know, can have non-denominational or public events. 
and also the chairs are loose so you can readjust them any way you like. <gasps> you worked it out Andrew. I use the force. Everybody else has gone downstairs. So like so many churches, the formal entry is rarely used. There's the secondary entry, which is used most of the time, which goes into the community space downstairs. I love the fact that the axis, you know, the, the entry there is actually off axis. So now we actually see we're in line with where the cross is, but it's actually where the trees are. So you're completely denied the axis, the central sacred line. It's for trees, not humans. It's trees, yes. So community space downstairs. And also now you can see the other street orientation. These are the blades that you saw outside, same columns that you saw outside. So that is introduced to the inside as well. So what happens outside doesn't stop. And also quite beautifully done is that the frame themselves are really deep. So the frames, the glazing in, it is in where Andrew's touching is actually on the outside, whereas up the top here, when it's frameless, it's actually on the inside. So really do read like that these are frames and then there's a gap, the shadow line, and then the canopy comes sweeping in. Mm. So think about that from the outside. We'll show you some images of it. The glazing line's out there and then it comes back in and up, which means you read that quite separately, that big fin above. Beautiful section coming down here, tucking in. And the ceiling, the same material coming down. I've never been in here. I've never been in either. There's a bunch of architecture nerds in here. Hey, hello. Oh, this is not as glamorous as upstairs. No, this is like a seminar room. Yeah. It's perfectly set up for exam distances or COVID distances. Yeah, maybe they were immunizing. Why is it uh, sloping, I wonder? Those end bits. Yeah, so. Don't know. Where's the glass line? Is that there? Or is that the... The glass line. The stairs were in the... This is the glass line, isn't it? That's under the forecourt. Oh. Oh, yeah, is that's that the right? stairs. That's the stairs, yes. That's underneath the stairs. Oh, OK. Duh, so of those stairs from the outside that go up to those gates. Yeah, but they made it reciprocal here just for... Symmetry. Symmetry. Yeah. With a TH. So you guys know where we are, so we were pointing at this on the outside before. So you've got this one box next to the big floating box and it's, you know, rectilinear grid with the skylight above. But then when you come inside, that then becomes the trigger of that curve. So the curve doesn't reveal itself on the outside except for the roof. So you only get that from a distance. But I always wondered why they had that little <coughs> high skylight there. Yeah, now it makes sense because it forms a, another curve in here separate from the main curve. Well, that was that. Um, if you want to check out the, what we actually saw in three days in Sydney, check out this video below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe over there.